Good morning. It is the 1st of November. It is All Saints Day. And we welcome you as the St. George's Parish family celebrates the Feast of All Saints. Lord, open our lips. And our mouth shall proclaim your praise. O oh God, make speed to save us. O oh Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Let us pray. God of life and blessing, you created all that exists. In Christ, you offer your redeeming love to every soul in every situation. So it is our greatest joy to be united by your spirit in the community of your people, stretching throughout the generations all around the world you love. We join our thanks and praise to the voices of all your saints, both in heaven and on earth, who worship and adore you, saying, all blessing and glory, all wisdom and thanksgiving, all honor and power belong to you, O God, this day and forever and ever. Amen. And now, let us confess our sins before God and one another. As we say together, God of courage and commitment, we confess that we have not followed the path you set before us. Discomfort and fear hold us back from fully embracing your gift of new life. Our anxieties prevent us from bearing witness to your love. Forgive us, O oh God. Give us courage that we may be your saints in our own time, faithfully following Jesus wherever he may lead. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, pardon, and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. And the Collect for All Saints Day. God of all holiness, in your realm of glory, those who are poor now will receive the kingdom, those who are hungry now will be filled, and those who weep now will laugh and leap in joy. Strengthen us by this vision, so that with the saints before us, we may bring near your justice and peace through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. The first reading is taken from the book of Revelation. After this I looked, and there was a great multitude that no one could count, from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, robed in white, with palm branches in their hands. They cried out in a loud voice, saying, Salvation belongs to our God, who is seated on the throne and to the Lamb. And all the angels stood around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures, and they fell on their faces before the throne and worshipped God, singing, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders addressed me, saying, Who are these, robed in white? And where have they come from? I said to him, Sir, you are the one that knows. Then he said to me, These are they who have come out of the great ordeal. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. For this reason they are before the throne of God and worship him day and night within his temple. And the one who is seated on the throne will shelter them. They will hunger no more and thirst no more. The sun will not strike them nor any scorching heat. 
for the Lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd, and he will guide them to the springs of the water of life, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. And now a song of praise. Glory to you, Lord God of our fathers, you are worthy of praise. Glory to you, glory to you for the radiance of your holy name. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. Glory, glory to you, to you in, in the splendor of your, of your temple, temple, on the throne of your majesty, glory, glory to you. Glory to you, to you seated you between the cherubim. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. Glory to you, beholding the depths in the high vault of heaven. Glory to you. Glory to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. The second reading is taken from the Gospel of Matthew. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up to the mountain. And after he sat down, his disciples came to him. Then he began to speak, and he taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven, for in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. I speak to you in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. So what in the world was Jesus going on about in our reading this morning? Uh, his idea of blessedness doesn't really square with our experience. Uh, blessed are, are, are those who mourn. I mean, I, my experience is that there's not a lot of blessing in the heartache that comes from losing a loved one. And comfort is awfully hard to come by. Uh, blessed are the meek, for they'll inherit the earth. It, 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 it kind of feels when we look around like it's the power brokers and the ruthless who are in control of things and the meek get the short end of the stick. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, those who, who work for justice, um, especially for the marginalized and people of color. It seems like it's a bit of a fool's errand. Uh, was Jesus just looking at the world through rose-colored glasses? It feels that way. Uh, which probably means we need to take a closer look at, at what's happening here. Uh, we, when we look at the setting at the beginning of chapter 5, Matthew, I think, drawing on the images of Moses receiving the commandments on Mount Sinai, has Jesus going up the mountain where he sits, assuming a position of authority, and begins to reinterpret the Torah. Begins to reinterpret the law and doing it from a position of authority. And, and who's he talking to? Uh, first, his disciples, the ones 
who are going to be the leaders of his kingdom movement, the ones who are going to be sent out to do his work, and the crowd. And the crowd would have been primarily made up of those folk who have been pushed to the margins, those folk who have been kicked around by life and know too well what it means to struggle and to suffer. And I think, I think we need to be really clear that as Jesus speaks to them about blessedness, he is neither minimizing nor trivializing the reality of their suffering and their pain. Not at all. What, what he's doing, I believe, is making a proclamation, making an announcement. Uh, I, I love the way N.T. Wright in his Kingdom New Testament translates the word that we normally translate as blessed. And he translates it as wonderful news. Wonderful news for the poor in spirit. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Wonderful news for those who mourn, for they will be comforted. What, what's the wonderful news that, that he's talking about? I think this. I think he is proclaiming at this point that God's kingdom, the kingdom that Isaiah talked about, in chapter 25, and I don't want to sound like a broken record, but it, it, it all ties together here. When Isaiah said, on this mountain, I will hold a great feast for all people. On this mountain, the shroud that lies over all people will be removed. On this mountain, death will be swallowed up. On this mountain, I will wipe away every tear from the eyes of all people. I believe that what's happening is that Jesus is saying during this Sermon on the Mount that those words of Isaiah, his kingdom, those, those are not just empty words. They're happening. They're beginning to happen right now. In Jesus' ministry, in his teaching, his preaching, in his healing, God is working in a new way, in a fresh way, in, in the work of the movement that Jesus started, his kingdom movement, God's kingdom is breaking in. The world is about to be stood on its head. In our reading this morning, the Beatitudes um, are not simply be happy attitudes. They are rather a picture of what it's going to look like when God is in charge and what we have to do to get there what it's going to look like, and what we need to do to get there. And, and he doesn't stop at the end of the last Beatitudes. I mean, that's where our reading today stops, but that's not where the sermon stops. He carries on and he says, listen, you are the light of the world. You are the salt of the earth. Be what you are. Be what you are. George Bernard Shaw, in, in his play, Joan of Arc, there's a wonderful, wonderful scene where, where Joan is desperately trying to get the weak, insipid, future Charles VII to man up and, and to take some initiative. And, and it's not working. And, and so in frustration, she says to him, there is one thing on earth that you have never learned. And from curiosity and not a little bit of arrogance, he says, and what might that be? And Joan replies, Charlie, you have never learned that we are put on this earth not to do our business, but to do God's business. I think if we pay attention to the readings on this All Saints Day, I think we are being told to be what we are and to understand that we are here to do God's business. We are here to be the light of the world. 
It's not enough to simply pray, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We need to live it and to make that happen. But, but there's more because All Saints is, it's the recognition that God's kingdom is about life on both sides of the grave. Uh, some of you, some of you have heard me tell my favorite story from Greek mythology. And, and I'm going to tell it again because like the stories from scripture, I think we need to hear them again and again because we hear them differently every time. Um, and in my case, I probably tell it differently every time, but that's okay. Uh, king Minos, the king of Crete, what was a particularly nasty individual. And, and he had a labyrinth built that made its way from, from the ground into the surface, into the center of the earth. And at the center of this labyrinth was a beast that, that was half bull and, and half human, and, and it ate human beings. And, and King Minos, in, in his way of maintaining peace, with King Aegeus in Greece said, listen, every year, every year, you need to send me seven handsome, strong men and seven beautiful young women so that I can feed them to the minotaur, to the beast, or I will destroy you. And so year after year after year, uh, King Aegeus sent seven strong men, seven beautiful women to Crete where they would be put into the labyrinth, they would make their way to the center, and they would be killed. Well, finally, finally, Aegeus' son, Theseus, decided that enough was enough. And so he volunteered to be one of the ones put in the labyrinth. And when he arrived in Crete, uh, King Minos' daughter, Ariadne, fell instantly in love with him. And the last thing she wanted was for this wonderful, incredibly handsome man to, to be killed. And, and so she created a plan. And she said to him, Theseus, I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you a piece of yarn and you tie it to your belt and, and, and you go in and do what you need to do, but then follow the yarn back out to safety. And, and so Theseus, went into the labyrinth, and, and he could have stopped part way and come out, but he didn't. He made his way to the center. He killed the minotaur, and, and then he followed the yarn back out to daylight, to freedom, and to the love of Ariadne. I, I love that story because I believe that the labyrinth is a wonderful metaphor for life. I, I believe that every human being who has ever walked the face of the earth has walked in that labyrinth because life is a labyrinth full of twists and turns and dead ends. Success and failure, happiness and sadness, sickness and health, incredible joy and heart searing, heart searing pain and grief. But for those of us who are people of faith, we believe that there was a man who walked that labyrinth, who destroyed the beast that we call death and changed the way we look at death forever. And, and, and that man we call Jesus. By his life, by his death, by his resurrection, we have come to look at death differently. We have come to believe that death is not the end of the story, it is the end of the chapter. And so on, on this All Saints Day, um, yeah, we, 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 we are called to remember to be what we are. We, we, we are called without question to remember that we are on this earth to do God's business, not to do our own. But just as importantly, and perhaps more importantly, this is a day when we think about those who have gone before us. Certainly, we remember the saints, the big name people that we see in stained glass windows, the ones who by their courage and their faith and their witness shape the church. That's important. It's a good thing to do. But I think, I think more importantly, 
I think we need to remember the people who we love, the people who have touched our lives, shaped our lives, the people who have given us hope and joy and reason to live, but are no longer with us. And I believe we need to do that. Remembering, remembering the incredible words that we heard read from the book of Revelation. Listen to these words again. When asked with a question, who are these robed in white and where did they come from? The response, these are they who have come out of a great ordeal. They will hunger no more and thirst no more. The sun will not strike them nor any scorching heat. For the lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd. He will guide them to the springs of the water of life and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Today, we think of those people who have been taken from us by death. And we cling to the faith. We cling to the faith that for them, there is no longer pain or suffering or heartache, but life and love, because we believe that they are with God and in God. And I believe that on this All Saints Day, for those of us who are left behind, for those of us who are still walking in the labyrinth, for those who understand the incredible pain of separation and loss and grief. For those of us who understand heartache, I believe this is a day that we are invited to allow ourselves to fall into the embrace of the God who loves us and will never let us go. And to know that that God is already, even now, beginning to wipe away every tear from our eyes. And I believe that that is the good news of Jesus Christ for today. Amen.
affirm our faith. In the words of the Hear, O Israel, as we say together, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. This is the first and the great commandment. The second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. God of all people, all places, and all situations, we come seeking your strength, your peace, and your direction to know the comfort of your presence and the energy of your spirit. You have called us to work towards reconciliation in the world. Help us to live out the ways of your kingdom in your church and in our lives. God, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Jesus, you said, blessed are the poor. We pray for those who find themselves on the margins of the economy, suffering the anxiety and restriction of low income and the insecurity it brings. Challenge, challenge us in our stewardship so that this world will more and more reflect your kingdom. Where there is enough for all, and everyone can enjoy the blessings of your creation. God, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Jesus, you said, blessed are those who hunger and thirst. We pray for people and communities facing famine and drought, as well as the pandemic. Give strength to people and agencies dedicated to alle alleviating misery. Move us to share what we have with those who have so much less. God, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Christ, you blessed the peacemakers. We pray for those who work for peace and reconciliation in a divided world. Protect those who face violence, persecution, and chaos in their homes, workplaces, or communities. Transform the day-to-day -day struggles in the, of those living in danger or discord. Move us to serve as mediators and models of forgiveness in our own relationships. God, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Jesus, you blessed those who weep. We pray for those around the world and in our community who are dying and for those who weep for their loved ones who have died. We name in silence those on our hearts this day, including those saints who have blessed us in days and years gone by. Especially today we remember Wallace Gordon Nesbitt, Bernard Coker, Gordon Nelson Frank, Evelyn Lutitia McNeil, Mabel Rusi, Reverend Canon Dr. Duke Vipperman, Alvin Percy Proctor, Cornelius Frank Vanderville, Douglas John Dixon, Susan McLean, Professor John Hamilton Wiley, Reverend Thomas Bonima, Reverend Richard Gates, Rhea Teets, Anthony Dixon, Roberta Ann Dunn, Richard Paul Bartley, Archdeacon Cyril Edmund Lads, Carolyn Winnington Ingram, Lynn Margaret Coburn, Louis Herman Flanagan, Lillian Howlett, Eleanor Merle Lawson, Dr. John Jack 
Carl McLister. Keep us united in love with all who rest from life in this world, but live with you. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray in the words that Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And now live this day with rejoicing. Surrounded as you are, by such a great cloud of witnesses. Take courage as you face each new challenge and comfort when you pick yourself up from a fall. In whatever good you choose to do, precede it with hope, accompany it with prayer, and follow it with thanksgiving. And the blessing of God most wonderful, whom the saints have trusted as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be with you today, tomorrow, and forever. Amen. Amen.